Mike the Hobbit here. Lowdown Brown. Inviting you to check out Geek Some of the Influence, a podcast that pairs booze with conversation with good friends. And a little nerd culture. We get a lot of colorful conversation out of our episodes, but it is here for everyone. No gatekeeping. Always level up everything we do. We'll punch up, never punch down. Exactly. So check out Geeks Under the Influence everywhere you get your podcasts and join us or die. Shut the fuck up, Hobbit. Welcome to GUI Nights. GUI Nights. Yeah, I am Lowdown Brown. With me as always, Mike the Hobbit. This is the tangential side of GUI. This is like so many of those other shows that has the after the show bit mixed with a little bit of Baywatch night, so it's a little sexier. It's a little bit after hours. Also while tying it into the previous episode of GUI, so look forward to that too, because this comes out the week after the flagship hour-long episode. So make sure to check out GUI Nights, and uh, when you're done, you can go the fuck home. The views and opinions expressed on Beautiful Disasters are those of the panelists and not those of the Geeks Under the Influence Network, their sponsors, or anyone else involved. Also, there is going to be a lot of adult language used on this podcast, so please keep your little kitties away, unless you don't care about them that much. Welcome back to Beautiful Disasters. This is our first full episode of 2022. Bam. We uh, had a little bit of a late start. We had a little hiccups. We're going to get into that in a minute. <laughs> I also started a new job. So it's been it's been a complicated been a lot of shit. beginning yeah. of the year. But uh, we got a great fucking show tonight. Uh, let's get into the panel here. I'm the Groots. F you, Hunter. And our guest tonight is... Hey, I'm Nick. <laughs> Nick. Nick has been on uh, the GUI flagship podcast several times. Yep. Always always fun episodes, so we're, we're happy to have you this time. I appreciate it. Hell yeah. So I think, what, we tried to do this, what, a few weeks ago, and then... We uh, did, yeah. We, I, I a couple think, COVID uh, couple close contact shit, and then my body decided to start fucking up, and had I was out for like yeah. a week, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been complicated. You know, like, you know, life, the universe, and everything got in the way of this episode, but we're finally getting to it. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> Only three and a half weeks late. There you go. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Luckily, the movie we're covering was on, has, was on Shudder and has stayed on Shudder. So. And this, again, is a recent film. Yes. 2021 release. This is Prisoners of the Ghost Land. What number is this for us with Nick Cage movies? Seriously. I don't know. It's just it's just becoming a thing. <laughs> I know. Like every year, all right. Uh, we'll at least do one or two. I mean, but motherfucker keeps knocking shit out that we have to cover his movies. I mean, come right? On. Yeah. No, we've done at least two of his, right? Fuck more than that. Willie's Wonderland. Uh, Mom and Dad. Mom and Dad. Is there not really another one in between? We that? didn't do Mandy or Color Out of Space, but we have referenced them both in episodes. Okay. Damn, I thought we had done something else of his, but no, I guess you're right. No, no, those are the two. All right. Well, shit. I guess. Uh, I'm trying to think of who we who who we've had the most of then because if it's not Nick Cage, who the fuck is it? Oh, I don't know now. Yeah, I can't think of it. However, I will say that this particular movie definitely lives up to the theme of our podcast. Which, Jesus Christ! For anyone who's just joining us, <laughs> is beautiful disasters. We cover the movies that maybe you haven't heard of as much, the weird movies, the cult movies, the B side of cinema, th- that kind of shit. Yeah. You know, and we have fun time with it. You know, and this definitely fits that. Like, what the fuck is going on in the movie? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah they, this is straight down that alley. <laughs> it sure is, and I couldn't have been fucking happier with this movie. <laughs> I made it through about halfway through this movie. I always said, "Yeah, this is a fucking Groots movie." Because oh, yeah. there's certain movies you go, "What the fuck is going on?" And I go, mm, "Yeah, Groots is like, yes, yes, I, I love this fucking random ass shit that keeps going on and." This movie's fucking random as a fuck. Oh, like, it, it definitely is. It, I, I think it's, it's like a creative like bukkake. Yeah. All right. So it's basically <laughs> like they had, I, I, the director 
had all these ideas. The writers had all these ideas, and they just threw everything at the fucking wall. <laughs> I want to say this movie started like a Terry Gilliam movie. Like, it feels like a Terry Gilliam movie. And then the director's like, no, 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 no. Not enough weirdness, all right? I want right. to take that element and also have, I don't know, cowboys and we, samurais. And, in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Yeah, and, with people with weird electronic voices and some like, like it's just all a mash of a, a bunch of crazy yeah. ass shit uh, so much of this came across like you know what i don't know when we're gonna get funding again let's do it all right yeah. <laughs> like what? there was like three movies i said well we can't do all three let's make it one all someone right? went bullshit yeah. they fucking spent money on this though they legit did you know like they built giant ass sets that fucking wasteland town with the mm -hmm. fucking clock they built that shit. That was huge. That wasn't CGI. I think one of the things that piqued my curiosity is um, Nick Cage literally came out after the movie, before the movie was being released, and said that this was by far the craziest movie he can think of he's been in. And that's coming from fucking Nick Cage. You're like, what the fuck are we going into? And yeah. You, yeah, no, he's right. No, that, he's right. That says a lot, but. <laughs> yeah. It really does. So uh, let's let's uh, talk about a couple of the uh, key players here. Uh, the director is Sion Sono, who I've seen a couple of his movies. He he's, he did The Suicide Club, uh, Why Don't You Play in Hell, and Tokyo Vampire Hotel, the series and the movie. But uh, there's a movie that I'm hoping one day we will cover uh, of his called Tokyo Tribe. So he's not as prolific as like Takashi Miike, but he definitely has a weird ass fucking like style. Yeah. And I, I will say this movie was fucking gorgeous to look at. Oh, yeah, no. The cinematography, the fucking art direction, the sets, like everything about it was just It was a beautiful. pretty, it was a beautiful, weird fucking movie. Yeah. I'll, I'll yes. definitely agree with you there. Like the visuals were absolutely the highlight of this movie. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, of course, our protagonist is played by Nicolas Cage. And in the credits, his name is only Hero. He is never actually given a name. Okay. Yeah, I was curious because I was like... <laughs> I can't recall his name except for the little kid that runs out and says, Hero, Hero. I guess that was it. It was the same thing with uh, Willy's Wonderland. Like, they never actually gave him a name. He was yeah. just the guy. The guy, the, yeah. The man or whatever it was. <laughs> uh, and a couple other recognizable names. Uh, we had Sophia Butella, um, who was the female lead. She was in uh, the Kingsman, Hotel Artemis, and Atomic Blonde, like, I think uh, Kingsman is the main one people will go. The chick with the stilt legs. Right. She was also in that shit version of The Mummy. Yeah, like, let's, let's just say Kingsman. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so she was the female protagonist. Uh, we have our couple villains. We had uh, Bill Mosley. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of the main main yeah. villain, yeah. From the Rob Zombie trilogy. Texas Chainsaw 2. A lot of other genre shit. Yeah, I was gonna say. I, mean, I think we've seen. I think him that's at, pretty. We, much, we've seen him at like. Five, you say ten Rob Zombie, and that kind of covers him, all right? I mean, he, he's kind of typecast into a certain genre. So yeah. it's. Wait, does he have a beard in this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah oh, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It actually does he shave anymore? I don't know. It actually fucked me up because um, <laughs> in Texas Chainsaw 3D that came out like 2013, he's in the opening sequence, but he's like no beard. I was like, who? I know that is that motherfucker, but is he allowed to not have a beard in this movie? Yeah, he looks weird without a beard. Yeah. And then uh, the accomplice, we'll get into the accomplice, uh, Nicolas Cage's like, psycho companion. Psycho. In, in his prior bank robbery days, played by Nick Cassavetes. Oh, back from back after a face-off shit, man. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> D director of The Notebook. Like what? Yeah, he was the director Seriously? of the Notebook. Yeah, <laughs> he he tra he's directed a bunch of movies, a lot of chick flicks, surprisingly, including the fucking Notebook. No shit. <laughs> yeah, that that's 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 saddening. I know, because his dad is John Cassavetes, and that, that motherfucker yeah. was awesome. Uh, his first he, movie was uh, She's So Lovely, that um, like had John Travolta and uh, oh okay, somebody uh, goddamn like Sean Penn. which you know isn't really a chick flick, but then it's like Notebook and like a, a bunch. You're like. What are you doing, man? Because well, every role he plays, usually he's like some like badass motherfucker, right? But he's like, I, I just, I like to direct chick flicks. I, I don't know. Now, you, you think he's doing hey. the chick flicks for money, or you think he's just doing those for fun and I then doing know. this Who, for the favors? It could be one or the other. He, you know, <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah, I like to play the badass. 
but I'm, well, he's a big like, motherfucker. I'm, I'm soft inside. Yeah, exactly. And they Bring definitely made him look like a goddamn monster in this. Oh yeah. Even before he had the makeup, like he just. Oh, he, that that he, opening sequence with the with, with the bank robbery. I mean, yeah, he, dude. He, I was like, looks, is that the guy from Rammstein? Who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> he looked fucking like yeah. I didn't even recognize him. All right, so that's basically uh, most of our cast. And we had um, we had a fucking badass. What was his name? Uh, the character's name was Yasujiro. For, uh, I didn't write down the fucking actor's name like an asshole. Was that like the main samurai motherfucker? He was like the yeah. main henchman yeah. for the governor. He was fucking... The he, executioner samurai. He looked severe as fuck, and, and he, he had some skills with the blade, man. What I like about him, though, is that he was a badass motherfucker, but he always had that face of like feeling sorry for the person he was about to fucking murder the shit out of. You know, that, that face, you're like, I'm yeah. so sorry, but you, you shouldn't have fucked with me. I'm going to kill you so fast. But they, they, like That approach was hinted on when like his sister was talking to him in yeah. the movie of just... like. Like her being behind the cage and yelling at him, be like, "I know you only took this job because you're trying to save me, but you realize that he's never gonna let you go. Yeah. So you should walk away from this." And you just saw him getting like it's such a sad. But even before that, like he, you know how you have those those henchmen. They're like, yeah. "Oh, I want to kill the fuck out of." He, he's like, "All right, who I gotta kill? All right, these guys. Okay." Like it always just seemed like he was like, like clock it in, and then like, "All right, well." Come at me, and I'll cut yeah. you in the fucking face. He, he did a great job at portraying, like, you're not the seventh person I've killed. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> no, he definitely had the highest body count of anybody in this yeah. movie. And he never Legit. reacted. He never had that, you want to fuck with me face. It's just like, all right, cool. True, all right. true. Another day, <laughs> another day of the job. <laughs> all right. So um, I think the only way we're going to get through this plot is if I, is if yeah, I yeah you you, you if we drop it. acid I'm gonna I'm just gonna kind of rattle off I took a lot of notes but I, I'm gonna I rattle off see that a thing holy here, shit a thing here anytime you want to you want to make a statement about what the fuck is going on all right this is probably not gonna make a whole lot of sense because the movie is it, bananas. It, what's about to happen for the next thirty minutes is probably gonna sound like the ramblings of a crazy person that we had some weird fever dream and we decided to tell you about it that's yes. the movie. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I, I need to say this. I've already told both of y'all this, but like the first time I watched this movie, I fucked up, and I watched it without subtitles. So anytime that there wasn't anything in English, dude, kind of just kind of left it up to my perception because I don't understand Japanese and I don't understand the slurring that they were just doing specifically for the movie. And it was kind of like I could make enough connections and it was like, okay, this kind of makes sense. I watched it again with subtitles. <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs> you became more confused. I got more confused yeah. after I watched it all the way through one time, not understanding half of what was being said. And then when I found out what they were saying, it made less sense. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that is bananas. I might actually turn off subtitles if I watch it on my DVD copy next time, just to see... What kind of weird experience that is. And just try to forget everything else and then just like then you can just pick up on the like voice inflections yeah. and and the and the physical responses of when people are talking Holy be like Holy shit. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, I I can see how that would that would happen. If that's that's bananas. Yeah. All right, here we go. The movie opens with a fucking beautiful like weird blue toned city they walk into what looks like a saloon slash bank <laughs> yeah there are it's a very festive bank is <laughs> the best way to put it it's blue walls every everything is so colorful everyone's in weird colored suits i noticed that there's everybody seems there's a person wearing all green everything's a person clean. all red it's the only place in the city where everyone's dressed like that too and it's the only business yeah <laughs> yeah apparently <laughs> it's so yeah. out of place like it works because that bank interior is white so everybody's clothes are like fucking spot on. Yeah, like. it's it's immaculate, and there is one amenity in the bank, which is a <laughs> gigantic aquarium of gumballs. Yeah, like a giant gumball machine, like that huge. And it's like, what bank has fucking like come in, cash a check, get a gumball? I don't know. Get a cup of gumballs. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we, they, they have a lot of kids come in. I, I have no idea. I, I will say my six-year-old walked past during that part, and I was like, nope, yeah. you're going this way. Like, but I want to see the candies. Like, like, no, no, I don't know no, 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 no. this movie. <laughs> we don't know what's about to happen. Uh, a duo rolls into this bank to rob it. We have Nicolas Cage and his psycho accomplice. Literally named Psycho. psycho. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
And they roll in. They're robbing the bank. Shit goes a little sideways. A kid is offering Psycho some a cup of gumballs. Kid does not pick up on social cues. Dude's holding a gun, yelling at everybody in the bank. He goes, he seems like some of like bubble gum. I don't like. Hey, kid, early life lesson. Exactly. Don't approach the dude with the guns, yelling at people. He probably doesn't want bubble gum. I don't know. True. Yeah. So we we realize later that this is a a piece of a flashback. And then we have... Did we, though? <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I believe groups did. <laughs> yes. So then we are transferred to a red town. Beautifully red, where there, you know, it, it, it looks like a western town, but there's Japanese, like... Sort of. It, it's, it's western at first. It looks like... All right. It looks like... It looks like a traditional Japanese town. Like a small, yes. like, town. Except, up to a point, everybody's in western gear, and you're like, okay... But then, also, people are in samurai gear, right? I mean, yes, like, and it, it's actually referred to as Samurai Town. There's yeah, like signs yes. up that say Samurai Towns. Right. Like, but this- until the first scenes is everybody in towns in, looking like cowboys, and then it cuts back and they're samurais. You're like, okay. And then we're gonna get to well, we find out that there's also cowboys in Samurai Town, right? Well, but, but uh, obviously, who runs Samurai Town? Well, well, before we get there, all right. Th- th- this is like the uh, the backstory that's going to make sense in ten minutes, mm, where uh, yeah, that's your opinion. We, we see uh, <laughs> the our our female protagonist, uh, Sophia. Oh yeah, uh, her Bernice, Bernice. Yeah. So she's hanging out with some folks, and they end up like running out of town. Yeah, it's like her and what three other girls. Yeah, yeah. Which all right, this is where I got confused. Are they captive, or are they just on display, and they were like, let's get the fuck out of Dodge? So, it, that's kind of, I wasn't really sure. Oh, God. Well, if you what don't know, then there's no I answer, right? I didn't know right? if they were like, all right, let's get the fuck out of Dodge, or what. But they... It looks like Girls' Night, but also, Girls' Night, yeah. maybe we'll find a better option get than the fuck where we are. So, so, my mind went down like such a different like rabbit hole on that that like I, I'll, I'll save that for later w- I think, towards when we get towards the end right the context um, comes a lot later yeah. when you're just like oh that's why yeah that's what that's one of the things that like this was this is one of the parts of the movies that are of the movie that almost made sense and what's what's Watch hilarious me. is that in the middle of the movie when we're when we're experiencing like the weird town situation there's so much fucking exposition that's that's being fed you so you understand what people are doing there's nothing in the beginning so it's a weird weird opening so we've got we go from like united colors of the benetton bank town to like red town where girl leaves etc and then uh fucking christ all the beautiful art direction <laughs> and then we cut to nicholas cage getting released from prison like he's he he was in shackles and he's like you know looking his age and everything and he's he's getting released is he looking his age well i mean well he's he's because i mean like he's not looking his like, age. Nick he Cage aged in the robbery Nick, nick cage released from prison looks exactly the same and that like 16 18 years was supposed to be going by yeah. in that frame it's like Dude, your beard didn't grow. <laughs> well, no, it grew. The black dye that he put in the beard was consistent, all right? <laughs> Samurai Town has a lot of black dye for that beard, all right? Well, you know what? Hey, uh, jails have different amenities in different <laughs> places. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I'm just fashion. saying, sometimes you get flashback and then current time. Yeah. And there's a little difference. Flashback Nick Cage, current Nick Cage, doesn't look any different. So he gets released from prison in like a sumo diaper, or yeah. Whatever, if that, if that, you know. So he's walking out. He's led out into this into the town, and there's like giggling geisha girls that are just like, "Let me see your balls." Did they put them out there specifically? Like, is that a routine? Like, release the prisoner. All right, girls. Now you know what to do because it's almost like they were prepped to start giggling at him as soon as he comes right. out. Like it, it was so set up as just like a display thing. Like every. I, you you get such the vibe that like any other crimes that were committed were just like death you're done yeah out but right. you they like your balls we, we like entertainment <laughs> yeah so obviously uh, the public is not happy that this monster who robbed a bank and made some deaths happen or whatever is getting released 
They're not happy about it. Uh, they're making fun of him and shit like that. But he gets he gets up, taken into town square, and then then who rolls up? Yeah, the motherfucking governor. But just to throw everything else out of whack, as we've explained this town with cowboys and samurais, and of course, then you got the governor who's fucking uh, Bill, Bill Mosley. Mosley. That fits none of, nothing else in this town at all, but you're like, all right, cool. He's the, yeah, he's the guy in charge. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the the weird white guy running the Japanese. Not even just a weird you know, white guy because like, he very much pulls in <laughs> that that character from like Devil's Rejects. Yes, where he he's does. very like, are you gonna fuck with me? Like that kind of shit. Oh, he's got just great the lines. aggressive, yeah, Otis the aggressive of like and kid just the and, controlling narcissist. And somehow you're like, yeah, this that, makes sense. All right. So yes, uh, fucking. We're making yeah, him he, lose he, his place. He has the best goddamn life. <laughs> All right. So basically, uh, he fucking just he starts into his tirade where he's like, basically telling Cage that his adopted granddaughter Bernice has gone missing and needs fucking retrieval from the ghost land, which is the land outside of town. Yeah. All right. I would almost feel like almost a la like Judge Dredd kind of like yeah it's outside just, the city li- city limits is the wasteland that you just don't really want right. to fucking go to. So he basically there there's a deal. He fits uh, he fits Cage with a leather suit uh, that has weird contraptions. We'll get to in just a second, but he basically says that you have you have a few days to rescue her. Or else. And then once he clicks the fucking, like, suit together. He puts the key in. Puts the key in and, like, fucking, he's got these glowing <laughs> orbs that are, like, fucking little mini bombs. Yeah. He's got them on his neck, on his arms. They look his... like fancy soaps. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got two on his balls. Yeah. It's placed, like, two neck, arms, legs, balls. like and Both balls. Literally one ball, one glowing on the one ball, one glowing on the other ball. So the basic gist is that he has a, he has three days to find her and find her unscathed. She has to use her voice print into this uh, giant contraption. Yeah, contraption in his arm like a pit boy. It's funny because like you, <laughs> you know? the little like some fucking was, like get, like it shitty exactly pit boy looked like some. Sh- yeah, because yeah. literally, like the the suit looks somewhat modern. We don't know the time period, but right, and everything looks modern until you get to this giant fucking walkie talkie contraption on like, his arm that is fucking just giant as shit. And you're yeah. like, looks like a like a, a it looked like a steampunk iPhone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you're like, exactly. everything else is like miniature sized, and then this giant fucking thing that you like press the red button, like it looks like it has toggle switches and shit on it. All right. Yeah. So we're getting a we're getting a lot of explanation explanation here. So he's got three days to find her, unscathed. Uh, she uses her voice to activate two other days that he has to bring her back. But in the meantime, if he gets frisky, or if if shit gets out of hand, some of these fucking like uh like little little, bomb little mini bombs are gonna go off, and if he fails. The ones on his neck are going to go and pop his head. Now, what is it? If he gets aggressive or angry, uh, it, it, if he gets was, horny, what's the fuck? It, like, it there's was, so many rules. Like, <laughs> just go, save her. Don't yeah. be angry while you're doing it. Don't try to fuck anybody while you're doing it. Just get her. Get her to say her name and this thing. Um, and as long as you do that, you yeah, you you won't die. Right. Exactly. And uh, we're I don't introduced- understand why he can't just be like, why he can't have a hard on. Like, God damn, dude, this is restrictive as shit. Well, no, <laughs> they, they they flat out said that uh, there there was a sensor that detected if. He was uh, allowing emotional aggression towards women. That would detonate yes. one of the bombs. It was like, yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? What the? <laughs> no, by the way, we should also say nothing on his head or a chip in there, just the suit knows. No, it, it's a leather bodysuit. Yeah. Like, it but it looks just like, knows. No, it, it just knows. <laughs> it just it, knows. It's just there. It wasn't like we injected you with a chip to communicate. No, no. no, no nothing just, knows what the brain's doing, just the suit Will fucking know. It Just will the, know. The leather can smell your aggression boner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did we mention every once in a while that um, Bill Mosley's uh, governor does come through the speaker? On his his set, so just <laughs> oh, remind true. him of time countdowns, and countdowns, or right. reminders like you're gonna fucking have your head explode, right? Like they couldn't just put a normal alarm clock on it; just had to be like, buddy, 
you got this much time. Like, he said, he well, reports, you spent this much time recording this and programming it in. You think it would be like a, a voice just like, you have one day and ten minutes till... Li-. But it's just like, hey, time, mo- it's, hey, motherfucker, you better hurry up. <laughs> time remaining, 53 minutes. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, bitch, you better hurry. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so we get a we get a brief little uh fucking uh motherfucker you better you better pick up the pace god damn it fucking. where's my granddaughter <laughs> <laughs> we got a brief little altercation here in the town where like some of the deputies are kind of getting they're not happy with him getting being released for this task well we I haven't guess. had that is nick cage still badass moment because you know he's been in prison so right. you have to have a let's see if he can still hold up his own. Like he's got the suit on, which but, which he does. There's a little fight scene. He, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He, he gets into a little skills. bit. It, it, the, pr- the prison for this was also like the crawl space underneath the porch of the sheriff's office. Something, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, also we get to see like uh, the first badassery from um, Tag Saka- Sakaguchi is the actor who plays uh, Yasujiro. There we go. All right, I got badass it. motherfucker. I'm just gonna call him badass motherfucker. He's, he's right? the badass Bam. motherfucker, and he fucking just like kills a bunch of dudes because he, the, he's just, just because the idea is is that I mean he is like the right hand to the governor. So uh, this dude that's being released is does you know his purpose is to rescue this adopted granddaughter Bernice. So he's not gonna let these dudes kill him. But the whole, the whole idea is just to show that he's a badass. Yeah, I was going to say, because yeah. he literally, they start attacking Nick Cage, and Nick Cage is holding up, but then it's, it's, he starts to get outnumbered. And you know when a motherfucker's badass, because he just stands there, and then he eventually like kind of looks like, do you want me to do my shit? And then puts the hand on the blade and pulls it out. That's that's the motherfucker you got to watch out for. The guys that just run into shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fucking rookie-ass motherfucker. No, no, no. The he, dude that stands there and goes, it's the time. And then pulls the blade out. You need me Those now. Those are the guys you got to watch out for. Yeah. All right. Is it my turn yet? Exactly. All right, cool. All right, cool. All That's right. Cool. <laughs> Let's fuck some shit up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you seven, you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he does that multiple times. Uh, I feel like he kills more of his own people through the movie than anything else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, absolutely. Lessons got to be taught over and over again. <laughs> and I, I, yeah, we'll, we'll get into other stuff later because I feel like, yeah. All right. So we, everything right, is set up. Track. Yeah. All right, let's, everything's set up. So they give the him a car. car. The car is car. All right. <laughs> He's like, this is where this movie goes. <laughs> Fuck you if you think you know what's going to happen. Right. Everything up until this point kind of still made sense. Yeah. So he's like, take the car. It's a fucking Toyota Celica. Like an old one. And he drives it like eight feet, gets out, and grabs a bicycle and starts driving away. And the governor's mad. He's like, well, he's no, not like going to be able to succeed. He, he got in the thing, floored it to the other end of the block, power slid until he got closer to the fucking basket one speed. Yeah, <laughs> literally a little girl's bike, it looks like, because... It's Nick Cage, and that bike is not a full size bike. No, it's like a three quarter. Like the, there, there's a full like basket. And he's just girls riding bike off, and, just, and the governor's like, "Are you ex- like you're gonna fucking fail, dude? <laughs> what are you doing?" <laughs> and Nick Cage is just like, "Fuck you, fuck you. I'm, I'm this is what I'm doing." Here. If you want to explode my head, okay. Yeah, but he makes his right hand <laughs> I samurai dude catch up with him in the car, and be like. Y- Need to take the fucking car. Yeah, yeah. It's like There's okay. No, you've got countdown happening. The little girl bike is not going to um, make it in the wasteland. All right. All right. I got to interject Even there I too. I kind of wanted that to continue. All I right. I know, but at the same time, like watching that, I thought at every time that he took another another step with it, I thought he was going to crash on that thing, and I don't think he was acting. I think it was actually just such a small bike that he was having trouble riding oh, yeah. the thing. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> He almost bailed on that thing like nine times. So eventually he gets convinced by the right yeah. hand man. So he gets I guess back I'll in the car. The car okay, which is then awesome because he speeds off and then the right hand man, and I guess they're like a mile back from the town, and he just looks at the bike like, really? Uh, I got to ride this fucking bike back to the town? Yeah, so then, so then he's got to ride the, the little yeah. girl bike back in a kimono and just like, don't he's let like, him get in the chains. I was just a badass like fucking five minutes ago. Now I'm riding this fucking bike oh, back. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Speaking of crashes, so <laughs> he's riding in. Good segue. He sees a weird ass fucking like sign that says like danger area 244 or whatever the fuck. You mean the one that just keeps spinning so you have no idea yes. where the danger you know, is? He's driving the like, Celica. Like don't go this way, I think. He's driving the Celica like a boss. And then he rolls <laughs> up uh, on a fucking weird ass 
like he like suddenly there's just a crew in yeah, front of him. There's, it looked like there, it looked like ghost samurais is the best way I could put it because they yes. just appear out of nowhere. It looked like a samurai chain gang. Yeah. Okay. It's like samurais, and then there's a bunch of dudes in stripes. Yeah. And then there's a bus with a guy with that looks like Freddy Krueger in it. I'm like, what the fuck is that? But that's about and then and then he just guns it in their direction and then they bright light him. They bright light him and then suddenly uh, the car is up on and a hill. This is my crashed. first indication of. I know I'm watching this movie, and I didn't pause or blink, but I don't know what the fuck happened. Because right. literally he's like, all right, full speed ahead, and then they turn the bright light on, and the next shot is just the car on its kind of side, and he's coming out, like he's like on the ground outside of it. I'm like, did I, did, did I miss a scene? What the fuck happened? We have a dream sequence <laughs> back in the blue, uh, blue town where he's seeing some flashes and he sees images of the kid that's right that yeah. was from the bank robbery every once in a while when he gets knocked out he goes back to this, yes, this, he, this yeah, he situation yeah. he gets knocked out a lot <laughs> yeah. a lot yeah and then he also sees like he's like walking by like like a mountain ravine pass and he looks up and there's like some weird ass statue people and then he fucking wakes up on the back of a cart that's being dragged by some Wasteland peasants? Wait, I don't know. Yeah, wasteland pa- peasants. And then we get a weird... That apparently I, have a huge access to toilet paper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. And we have weird-ass characters. Uh, the, like, this is where we get introduced <laughs> to Ratman, which... Ratman. I, yes. Ratman, but Ratman. seems to almost have more what I would say is feathers and shit like that, but it has a electronic voice and he just is asking, just braiding yes. fucking Nick Cage with the weird robot voice. <laughs> there's that. There's the, the fucking weird ass scavenger dudes that have all the metalwork on them. Yeah, and then you get the mannequins. Oh, that's, that's and at first he's going through, and there's a mannequin. You're like, oh, you know what? This actually makes sense. You see a lot of post apocalyptic movies, and they go, you know what? We got mannequins around. Let's just. But then you start seeing mannequins that moving. look like people, and, they're and moving. Yeah, the mannequin it, people freaked me to fuck out. I was like, what the fuck? That is was pretty this? fucking creepy and cool. So. Like, it, uh, I was good with it, especially with the first one. That like, then the head turns. Like, wasn't expecting that. All right, yeah. right now we're actually getting a little bit into the Ooh. mannequin people in in weird new. This town is the part of the was... movie where you go. I know I didn't take acid, but it feels like it's kicking in right about now because shit gets pretty fucking bonkers. Man. It gets <laughs> big in scale because he ends up. He finally gets dragged into this giant town square. And there's all the fucking like weird toilet paper mummy people, and there's a fucking preacher in a box, and there's a fucking giant clock tower. Now, this, this was what I'm saying with what the ass the part, fuck? because you'll notice there's this giant clock, and these dudes have the hand of the clock on a rope, and they're holding it, and they're struggling. It's like tug of war, and they're going, "We don't, we we're holding time," and you're like, "What? What? I, I, okay." So yeah. this is one of the things that watching it the first time without actually having the without having the subtitles made more sense. I thought they needed that metal for something. Yeah, I mean, he's they're like, trying to pull it off. He's like my my bladesmithing ass is like I could make some shit yeah. out of that, and you're trying to get it off of the thing. Find out later, like no, they're trying to hold it in place. Like motherfuckers, that's what anchors are for. Yeah, <laughs> all you had to do is tighten place. Like, you didn't like, have to have someone twenty four seven like trying like to pull it back. Shifts <laughs> of holding this fucking tug of war with this giant fucking clock. There it's like it's already on a rope, just tied to something. There was lots of big shit. <laughs> yeah, they're fucking. All right, we'll, get, we'll get to the pimped out fucking carnival trucks later. But, but let's get to the leader. <laughs> let's get to the leader of this. Yes. The whole thing. Because everybody's got toilet paper or covered in just weird shit. <laughs> and then plastic the bags blowing by like the crustiest library motherfucker comes out and he's the fucking leader. He's like, Hello there. And you're like, wait, what? His and name I, is Enoch. Yeah, Enoch. But he this this <laughs> white dude with glasses that like is like, I lead these people. And you're like, How? You don't you're just like this basic motherfucker. Well, this is the weird part of this movie, because this is really some kind of crazy... I guess because he can read? I, I, well, I don't know. A, this is a crazy person's, like, nightmare dream, like 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 you said, fever dream. Yeah. Where, like, all the major characters are, like, western actors. Yeah. For some reason. And, and meanwhile, everyone else is just doing, like, synchronized, like, interpretive dance. Interpretive dance, and then just making weird sounds out of nowhere. Like, there's just... 
<laughs> shit going on. You're like, what? Like the the kid that's the long haired kid that's part of the rat squad that just will just look and just scream for no reason and and react and just run and then scream, point and run. That's his job. In this gang, like your oh, job yeah. is, you see something, you scream, and you run. Okay. By yes. the way, that motherfucker turned into the Flash. Yeah, yeah, he's the fastest fucking kid ever. <laughs> Goddamn so. right. Okay, so where, Cage, where are we? Cage again? is waking up, waking up <laughs> on the fucking cart, and he's like, everybody's touching him and, and looking over him, and he starts to freak the fuck out. Enoch, this uh, preacher dude, comes out, and Cage starts to like defend himself. He's like, oh, 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 I'll fucking karate chop you, and he literally <laughs> says. Karate chop. You are not ad libbing. Literally, that, use the that, term. I will karate chop. I will you. karate chop you. Was yes. not a paraphrase. Yeah, he said. <laughs> he's like he's doing moves. He's like hi fucking yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, it's like. Is there any shit. chance some of this movie might have been ad libbed, or did like like is it in the script? I'm gonna karate chop you, or is it like Nick? Just say what you want. God, just say I, what you want. You know how much I wish and hope that on the original script, hi fucking yeah was in there. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, would, karate chop, motherfucker! Hi, yeah. <laughs> yes, we wrote this for you, Nick. So yes, uh, so he explains his purpose there. It's like I, I'm not staying. I don't give a shit about your fucking prophecy where we can't leave. I need to find this girl, and then I'm getting the fuck out because I don't have the time. And then he literally walks down a line of mannequins and finds her well, immediately. No, they tell he <laughs> says, "Has anybody seen this chick?" And he has a photo, and like and people no, fucking no. start raising, no. people start raising their hand, going, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." And they go, and they're like, she's with the mannequins. And so Nick Cage goes through mannequin after mannequin, taking tops off. And the dude that designs the mannequins, if you could help me with this. Yeah. Dresses so real, them? Yeah, gets or? really upset because he's like, you're fucking up my mannequins. And Nick Cage is like, fuck off. I'm trying to find this chick. Yeah, he's some weird fetish goth dude. <laughs> but and I guess if you're, <laughs> if, if you put the mannequin shit on, then you... So yeah, just become a man again. You don't actually, <laughs> and you lose you lose the ability to speak or move on your own. Like, is there drugs? Like, so this the, is the part the, where, these, yeah, exactly. The, these it, are people that have seen some shit out in the ghost land, and they're just so traumatized. They're like, do you mind if I put some plaster on you, make you a man so again? Then, I just yes, want to go away now. <laughs> then he makes them dolls. So he, yeah, there's pieces of mannequin like kind of uh, collaged over them, and he like three or four people in, he finds fucking Bernice. Like immediately, yeah. and she's nonverbal, and he's like, "Oh well, fucking, uh, that's it. We're going." So he puts her on a fucking cart yeah. and just starts wheeling around the town. He's he like, doesn't Fuck take the shit off her. He's just like, "Get in a car, and I'll drag you to yeah. the fucking car." <laughs> Mission accomplished. Just fuck it. And at this point, they're yelling at him like, y- "You can't fucking leave because you'll run into." Yeah, they're they're the, talking about like oh, the demon. Happened, There's happened. a lot of emphasis on the demon, which I guess is the ghost samurai he ran into earlier. I guess so yeah, yeah, but like the in, so it, it's obvious that it's based around like a prophecy that they can't leave, but they never bothered explaining that there was a prophecy. Yeah, there, there's all they know is that like after you get to a certain point, some people saw some flashing shit, and they said, there's "I guess we should stay here." Dump later that will kind of explain it. But kind of, yes, kind very of, much kind, kind of. of. Yeah. Kind of is optimistic on that one. So <laughs> on his way out of town, he rolls into like the area with all like the weird scavenger dudes that have these fucking crazy ass blinged out carnival trucks. Oh yeah, that yeah, are nice. Like, yeah, everything is all they beat were up, cool beat as shit. shit. But those trucks were like fucking primed and I up. I want to say those the- trucks were also in Tokyo Trot. Probably so, yeah. Like they're they're fucking. I don't I don't know what subculture. You talking about Rat Rat Man's crew, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That, Whatever that was subculture absolutely... in Japan that makes those, like, they obviously got them, and they were just happy to have them in a movie. That was absolutely the part of that town where I would have been spending all of my time. Yep. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude. Yeah. No. No doubt. That would have been your crew. <laughs> been like I'm right. building this shit. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, he passes through there. He he steals a gas can to go fill up the old Celica. And as he's doing that, oh man! Then we run into like uh, he fills up the Celica, and then he's like, "All right, I, I'm gonna un, I'm gonna get all this mannequin shit off you." So he starts taking pieces well, off of Bernice, right? Well, this is where it gets a little weird because he starts saying, "Take it off." Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. And it gets a little fucking creepy. It Take does. it off. And then Take he starts like, he's he's freed her face. He starts pouring water in her mouth, in her open mouth. And he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and that's what happens. <laughs> oh, shit. He gets, I start oh, getting we're, wide. We're like, going to throw this out there. 
I'm pretty sure he was getting turned on <laughs> by the water dribbling out of her mouth. And that's when we start hearing the beeping going on and in the crotch area. And he looks down in his crotch and one of his balls blows up. Yep, the, it, it explodes. And in case you're like, wait, was that near his balls? No. no. It's a ball because on the ground is Nick Cage's fucking testicle sitting right there. Like properly just cut <laughs> off at the epididymis. <laughs> <laughs> Blown straight nope. out the sack, nope. out his pants. Nothing there except for the ball. <laughs> the vast difference. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he picks it up, right? He like, picks it up and looks at it and faints. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, come on. Who wouldn't? <laughs> but, yes. So now we understand. Okay, yeah. This suit don't works. Drink, don't dribble water around him because he'll lose his other testicle. <laughs> yes, we know that, okay? Oh, God damn. Watch how you're drinking. <laughs> so we instantly go back into uh, a dream sequence again. More Dreamtown shit. And this is where we get, like, the full uh, this is the big memory robbery. of the bank robbery. Okay. So we got flashback to the bank where uh, the psycho and him uh, were doing the thing. And then Dumbass his, his accomplice, psycho, basically goes Mr. Blonde on well, the bank. Well, before, well, he's about to. He's, he's He looks like he's about to start... And then the kid comes up with the bubble gum. Yeah. And then he points a gun, and that's when our Nick Cage is like, "Are you fucking stupid? Are you crazy? Don't and kill then, kid. Yeah. And then yeah. pretty much jumps, knocks him over, and that's when yeah he he goes, Mister Blonde is like, yeah, all right, a bullet for everybody. I'm gonna start taking out motherfuckers. Mister Red, you're getting shot. Mister All Green, you're getting shot. Just pop, pop, pop. Yeah. He kills the guards. He starts shooting motherfuckers around there. They have a big fight. Um. And they uh, they end up getting like, like Cage and Psycho bust out the front door like a like out of a saloon style <laughs> seriously into the fucking street where there's all kinds of onlookers and stuff and 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 about I don't know what twenty fucking cops yeah twenty rolled cops up in there. show up they got guns trained. These cops are just going to wait outside while everyone's getting slaughtered inside. Pretty much. It's like, they got that guns. Seems like, that seems we like got plan. some katanas. And apparently, even though he's part of the crew, the guy with the gun is the bad one. The other guy, well, he doesn't have a gun, so <laughs> pretty much... Uh, he just, I mean, he puts his hands in the air, like, yeah. I'm done. But Psycho is like, Psycho's like I can take no. him. There's only 20 of them. I got a gun. So he starts shooting at the cops. Cops st- shoot him a couple times. In the exchange, a few bystanders get hit in the crowd. What are you talking about? As Nick Cage turns around, just starts running, and the cops, not acknowledging bystanders like in front of him, just start shooting at him and t- yes. not hitting Nick Cage, mind you, but hitting everybody else. I'm yes. pretty sure, like looking at looking at that closely in that slow mo, like half of the cops were sitting there just completely closing their <laughs> yeah. eyes and just yes. blind firing into the crowd, not hitting Nick Cage at all. But if you were anywhere near Nick Cage, you're if fucking you're, dead. If you're on that half of the square, you are fucked. Yeah. So they absolutely take out a, a mother and shoot her daughter in the leg, which we saw a little like uh, when he's unwrapping. Scar yeah. On Bernice it ends up being Bernice connection. Aha. So uh, mom's fucking, fucking dead, and we find yeah, out mom's dead. So that that's his realization dream sequence. He wakes up and somehow fucking stands up minus a ball. Which oh, I yeah, he's I, recovered by that now. I yeah. don't know uh, how yeah. the fuck I wouldn't not not bleeding out at all. Just like you know, no, with a no. leather suit, just seals it in. I I, 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 guess I think so. I don't know. Self sealing, <laughs> barely limp and walking. So, yeah, he stands up <laughs> minus a ball and then almost immediately Psycho and his uh, fucking samurai chain gang crew of like weird zombie prisoners shows up and kind of attacks, but it's not like a full attack. What's weird, because some of them seem to be zombie like. Yes. And like- other ones are just dudes that are just running up. on them. There's no like. Yeah, these guys, this part of our crew, they think they're zombies. We don't, but we just let them in there. There's kind of an exchange, but then it ends. And <laughs> it just was kind of confusing because, like, but they start going, and that's where, I guess, the aggression part of Nick Cage comes out that he's not allowed to have. Like, right. Because he's fighting them off, and then you hear beeping. And I guess he utilizes it to help him in the situation with being attacked, but. 
I guess he also yes. sets off a bomb yes, on his uh, arm. His, his arm, his right arm, that one goes off. So it fucks up his like elbow, like and his arm's just dead now. Yeah, I mean it's just you can see just chunks out of his fucking arm. But he did take out some motherfuckers with that. So yes, at least he did. Yeah, that like eight. Takes out eight people in like the top part of his <laughs> yeah, arm. <I> know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they leave. And then, you know, he's injured again. So I think Bernice ends up bringing him back to the town. Yeah, they and come back to the town. And that's where, or the wasteland town. Yes. And that's where then it's like, all right, we got to get together. And then you have to, like, let's all work together to make it back to Samurai Town. We got to yes. defeat the demons, which is This the is gang. where we get the exposition dump of why they are where they are. Yeah. Because there was the... The, the, it was the story of the Mile 244 disaster where basically like all these nuclear power plants that were like all fucked up and bad for their, you know, nature, I guess, were, you know, the, uh, one truck with all this like fucking like nuclear waste drove into a truck of or convicts, a, a bus of convicts yep. and exploded. Pretty much like the scene from Fast and Furious, except nuclear and waste. gave them all a uh, scalding atomic disease yep. is what they said. Yeah. I was like, okay. We, and, while this is being told by like a full choreographed crew of ten or twelve interpretive dance, yes, children. and they have like drawn lot. art that is displaying it. So it's like this: like, we will tell you the tale of the convicts in the nuclear yes. waste. But they're like answering people's questions, yeah. like in unison as well. It is. It is very well produced local theater. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> they've had some time. Yeah, and in the meantime, Bernice. Um, has got gotten her voice back and oh, she disarms, had to. She and had disarms to, yeah. his three day uh head popping uh thing so he gets a couple extra days on his um uh, on his explosive which seat. again is craziness to them because when she comes back those mannequins they never fucking talk she's she's not supposed to talk anymore. like how did you find your voice like it, it it's in my throat yeah i figured out where it was <laughs> <laughs> so after this after that weird ass scenario Oh, we have a, a short sequence back in Samurai Town with the governor where he is trying to, like, rally the, rally everybody and, like, be the man. He's like, bring me America. Make it rain. And he's, like, throwing around dollar bills and shit. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, it's yeah. really bizarre because all of a sudden he's like, come on, let's make this America. Like... He's like, it, like so, suddenly Samurai tur- Town turns into like the strip club yeah. on its worst night in the middle of like, like Tallahassee. A, he's like yeah. a Texas like <laughs> oil tycoon that is just run into the Japanese town. It's like, come on, bitches, let's get to get on. Well, let's get to on. Place now. Yeah. And what? And there's one she talk. She sasses him. You, you can't sass him. Mm. There's there's a few things you can do, but you don't sass. That's right. And he wants to make a lesson out of the sassing. Right. Well, this was also the one that. Um, uh, was instrumental maybe in in springing or getting Bernice yeah. out of town. So he has, of course, his right hand. Goddamn. Yasujiro. Yasujiro. Keep, keep having a look at it. I just want to call him badass motherfucker. I don't He's know why we had to give him that name. Bam. Well, that's, that's his name. <laughs> but yeah, no, he, he has him fucking like do the whole like samurai head choppy deal. And it's, yeah. it's very dramatic. Very dramatic. It's, it's nice you don't, dramatic. I don't think you actually see the head. There's the what's on her like the flower or he something. places a rose. Yeah. Like, Which like is in her cool. kimono by her neck. And then, of course, the rose comes off. What bothered me about that scene was like the other guy that was sitting there, like holding her in place, like never moved his hand from her shoulder. So you want to see like, his fingers? Man, like. like <laughs> yeah. You better be good they, they, with that, that positioning. Like, you got you got some trust in, Yasu, in Yashujiro's skills on that. <laughs> um, right. Otherwise, like. All right, so then uh, <laughs> let, it's just set up that if you question the governor, you say anything, you done anything wrong to him in any way, I, he's going to make an example out of you in front of everybody else with this right hand man. Now, I, I, I do think it's important to note that that is one of the people that helped um, his granddaughter escape. Okay. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Right. It, it, it wasn't just a matter of assassin, right? Yeah, but I'm just exactly. saying it there was, was that on top of it. But she's also he does not like to look foolish in front of him so on top of everything right. else she's also kind of like making yeah. him look like a fucking dickhead so oh yeah no, right no she was made an example of exactly all right so then we cut back to cage who's uh who who's awake and and he, he's pumped up now he's back in the town he's uh and he's had like dreams where he is now on a redemption path 
You know, he was he was brought he was allowed to be brought back to life or some bullshit like that. And he's just like, holy shit, I'm radioactive. <laughs> and he is like, he's trying to like rally the whole town. Oh, you don't this, have is to this be. this a speech? This is it. You oh, know? man. That's, he, that he, speech where he's just like, my fucking arm. And then he goes yes. full cage. Yes. And he goes, my fucking testicle is gone. Like, like in the my cageness that we testicles! were waiting for. Yeah. Testicles. We're all like, going home or yeah. whatever. You know, it's like, <laughs> holy shit. Okay. This is off, way off any rails that it could have been on. But it's just great because he's standing up there, hovering over everybody as he's doing the speech, and like he calls attention to himself from the whole town. Yeah, none of that needed to happen. Yeah, <laughs> but he fi- he fires the people up like fucking. Uh, yeah, let's yeah. let's fucking do it. We can beat the weird nuclear samurai gang. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, the the weird nuclear samurai curse. Like we can do this. We can do this. Like let's not look. I'm missing a fucking ball, and I want to do this. Like believe in me. He's bravehearting the fuck out yeah, of those he is. people. You know, he's just like, come on, <laughs> look at my ball. <laughs> so then we cut back to uh, Yasujiro, badass motherfucker, and he's walking the streets of fucking Governor's uh, Samurai Town. Now, I think this is this is only what I think could possibly be happening, is that there are, are roving crews of samurai dudes that really don't like the fact that they're letting out like convicts and shit and they just have a bone to pick and maybe some of the deputies feel the same way because motherfuckers keep trying to like screw with him and he just offs every motherfucker. Oh dude, there's one scene where he grabs a dude and he has him next to one of those uh, lanterns. Paper lantern. Paper lanterns. Takes the blade, pops it, and you see the blood, blood splatter in the paper lantern. That was I fucking awesome. Knew you were gonna, that was solid. You were yeah. going to talk about that? Yeah. That was the best kill in the movie. Yeah, it was. That was fucking awesome. Yeah. That was so fucking awesome. Yes, exactly. I had that written down, too. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, we get some, we get some a little bit of an explanation as to why this dude is the henchman in, for the governor, which is his fucking sister, right? Right, exactly. The sister's like, you know, you're just doing this, so I'll get out or whatever. Like, <laughs> Which, I'll be honest... Is cool, but like I don't know if we really needed it. It's just kind of like it's 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 like a redemption thing for him. Just so you know, like yeah, I know you can kind of tell he was a little bit kind of guarded, and he doesn't seem like the kind of fucking prick that would work for the governor. But here, here you go. So you know he's actually not that bad a guy. So I'm gonna interject here. That was one of the main scenes of this that, like, watching through the first time without understanding what was being said, (laughs) I was like. Some other shit's going on here. <laughs> and like my mind was like, is this going to a power play or is this just like fucking guilt tripping or is he have like a moral standing? And then just became like, oh, no, this is still completely selfish reasons. He just hates <laughs> everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Like <laughs> it would have been so much better. And like when I, when I was thinking like, uh, is he thinking that like he might just be the, the the town might be better off if like he's in charge and like yeah. second guessing the governor. Yeah, They're like no, 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 just like fuck those guys. Yeah, they, they, that was it. it was like, being, oh. they, they were being assholes. I had they to were fucking, being assholes, I had to and lesson. I take care of assholes. Yeah. Ah. Uh. <laughs> God damn it! All right. Now, so this all is right. when we get back to Cage and his crew, right? Yes. Um, they're all set up. The army of yes. everybody. He and they're fucking like. They're like fixing all the cars in town, and they're yeah, getting, that's what I'm saying. You have that kind all of those... build up like montage, like let's get everything ready. It is, yeah, it's like we're gonna montage. fucking we're gonna power through this fucking those pimped out evil trucks demon. going, which I I wish oh. we had a scene where the trucks actually yeah. rolled, man. God, yeah. but th- I will say this is where this movie definitely goes off the norm because you get the build up and then you get the confrontation and the fucking demon gang fucking rolls up there, yes. and you're like, here we go, Ghost Samurais versus these people, the rat. Rat crew and everybody oh, yeah. else, and and, then, and the result is like <laughs> psycho. Yeah, literally, Cage <laughs> like, stops. He goes, buddy. Oh, hey, buddy, and like walks up, and you're like, wait, you guys are supposed like, to like throw down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it's it, like, oh they, shit, they, they've just been killing people for the last like whatever 15, 20 years that this has been going on, and the yeah. solution is like, buddy, I, hi. And then, here's the thing: <laughs> is is you literally go, wait. But didn't he like run off right when they were about to get caught by the cops with Psycho, and Psycho? And you're, so you're like, this probably isn't gonna go, gonna go well. But then Psycho's like, ah, yeah, don't forget about that. I got nuclear waste on me now. I mean, that sucks ass. Right, like, no, no, he the, he did flat out saying like, you know what sucks having your friend bail on you. Yeah, but you know who the bad guy is? The governor. 
Yeah. And it's like, right. He doesn't even know who the governor is. Yeah. <laughs> he gives, and, and like Cage gives him a little bit of shit, like, well, I, that, that was some fucked up shit, man. <laughs> but like, you were always so much fun when you had a couple shots, shots of whiskey. Shots of whiskey. And you, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's such a weird thing because you're waiting for shit to go down. And they're just kind of like, man, I haven't seen you in a while. I mean, you're, you look weird with all your skin melting off and shit. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, my, my right ear's kind of funky now. Yeah. <laughs> so they basically so just, weird. You, you expect this big showdown, and they just, they just may, end up making a side deal where it's just like, Psycho's like, hey, uh, we'll let you guys go, pass, whatever. Uh, you just have to kill the governor. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you for something because yes. I there is don't no know. reason for it. I don't know the significance of it, but they've come to that agreement. And then the weird ghost samurai demon gang goes, check this shit out, and makes a mushroom cloud no, explosion. No, no, no. 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 I, I, once, uh, once Psycho said, like, as long as you kill the governor, we'll let you pass, he raises his hands and just triggers a nuclear explosion. Yeah. So they could have just triggered nukes at any point in time. What is that? Please help, help me out, uh... man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I was kind of hoping if anybody grew to be like, well, what well, you missed or you might not have heard. Okay, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. No, this is like trying There's to... There's no reason for there, the mushroom cloud explosion. There, were, there was no reason for it other than him being like, you know what, we're going to disappear, and instead of it just being a flashing light this time... <laughs> Can you explain... Like, Can nope. you explain the weird-ass bitch in a racer head with the fucking... <laughs> yeah. Crazy cheeks. All right. Well, singing the song. Then I, exactly. It's I feel some better, shit like that. I feel better. God, I get a migraine every time I watch that movie, and I like it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, it's meant <laughs> to be. I, that I just way. feel better that I know that all three of us are on the same page. <laughs> and I have like, no fucking clue what the motion no, that, clouds about. That, that was absolutely insane. But all now right. we get it. Now it. Now it's yeah. it's on to the fucking governor. So yeah, yeah. The governor is <laughs> reveling in his fucking town. He's like. Welcome to my animal farm. Long live the animal farm. He like animal he, farm. He's just chewing the goddamn scenery. Yeah, he is. It, it, Bill Mosley had, I think, the most fun in the like of everybody in this movie. He was anytime. Can I just be as ridiculous and like again a Texas uh, oil tycoon? Like I'm just fucking crazy. Like yep. and and just see if I can get twenty other people to start chanting the same shit I yeah. say behind me. And, like cheerleaders. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And and fucking Cage shows up with Bernice. And he's got a football helmet on now. <laughs> yes, he does. And he's got like a big ass like arm can, thing. Can I say at this point, I lost my shit because they were all talking in the middle of town square then. And someone's like, oh shit, look. Like they just like saw something on the horizon. They're like 20 feet away. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, like, it was almost in the like, middle of the street. It almost like, turned how? into the, the scene from uh, uh, Monty Python, the Holy Grail. Where they see the guy from far away, and they say, "No, he's there," and he stabs him because they're like, "Who is that?" And then Nick Cage is like, right in front of him. Yeah, they're all talking like, "Oh, he's not going to make it." Oh, damn! There you are. (laughs) And of course, uh, the governor rolls up, and he's like, "Oh, my Bernice, my Bernice!" And Cage is like, "Give me the fucking key, right, goddamn now, now. right now." He's like, "Ah, no, no, you degenerate pussy." Yeah, (laughs) yeah. And it's like, oh, well, there you go. So he's not holding, uh, Governor's not holding up his end of the bargain. And then, oh, surprise, the the fucking sister is on a minigun. (laughs) Yes, yeah, Uh, I I forgot about that. Well, (laughs) literally, there's, all right, so Cage is there, and they're surrounded by um, a lot of Western motherfuckers with guns. all the deputies. And then behind them, some samurais as the town sets up. Yeah. And then just this Gatling gun, Unattended, just, right just in front that, of them. That's just sitting there, <laughs> just sitting there, loaded, ready to go. Directly, if you say someone were to jump on there, quick access to just it's mow not down pointed everybody. At the gate. It's pointed at town square. Yeah. But I, 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 I very will disorganize <laughs> with how they're placing the galley gun. All right. I, I will at least say, like, earlier in the movie when she started acting like she was a little bit nuts, everyone's response was like, here, play with this robot. And her response was like to grab the robot's yeah. arm guns and be like, gah, 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 and which gah, I think gah, right gah, gah, before gah. this town scene, yeah, you, you you get a quick preview and she's like, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. Gah, 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 gah. But, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> again, don't load up the gun. Have it pointed at pretty much most of your army and then let the crazy girl anywhere near it because she's not even on team cage she's on team i'm fucking crazy and jumps in there and just mows down what like 40 motherfuckers so this is more or or at least you know if if you have armed weapons ready and soldiers 
have someone at the damn post. This, by the way, <laughs> true. This goes back to a movie we covered not that long ago, um, Rambo Four, oh, in which yeah. <laughs> the whole setup of Rambo Four's final battle sequences is we have the most one of these badass fifty cal yeah, yeah. guns, but we got two incompetent motherfuckers guarding it at the top of the hill, in which then Rambo fucking shows up, kills those guys, and then uses their own weapon to mow down most of their army. Same yes. shit happens here, except we yes. didn't get a, a neck um, pull, a, a throat slash. So True. Yeah. True. But besides that, again, just take Rambo out, put in Crazy Lady that makes robot sounds. Same thing. So we get the most frenetic <laughs> uh, sort of like end sequence situation. So Sister jumps on the minigun, mows down some of the dudes. Cage is fighting uh, deputies, Western style, where he's he's got a six gun. He's shooting at him like fucking like left and right. It goes back and forth between Bernice, fighting the Western guys, fighting the samurais, yeah. in different styles. Bernice rolls out. Uh, she like the sister gets shot a couple times. She's trying to take her away. She ends up with a fucking samurai sword at one point. Ellen up, motherfuckers. Uh, she kind of had some skills. I was I was kind of shocked with that. Badass yeah. motherfucker, Yasujiro. Like, uh, you think they're gonna square up? Him and Bernice? No, he walks past her and fucks up a bunch of other samurai. Uh, Cage is doing just fine. That that throat slice from Bernice, where the blood was like spurting from the lower abdomen. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, make it look like it. No, no, no. Uh, like we we gave up. Oh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, kill samurai, and then of course uh, we, get the, we get the cage reveal. The cage, cage reveal where like someone's pulling on his on his <laughs> hand. He, you know, he he, sta- he stabs somebody, and his hand's stuck in the guy. Yeah, man. or at least what we thought was his hand, and then pulls he it pulls out, out, and he's got a fucking samurai sword. Yeah, in the, his the best way hand. to describe it is is like if anybody's watched Walking Dead, what um fucking like Daryl's brother that I uh, I can't remember, but he had the knife hand mm-hmm. yeah, with yeah. the yeah. It's pretty much that, but it's not even a knife. It's more of a sword. Yeah, it's like an oversized push knife yeah. on a gauntlet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, we get... Um, it had to happen. Uh, Cage versus badass motherfucker. Yeah. Samurai. Holy shit. Versus seven other samurai at the same time. Yeah. Which... That they're both fighting while fighting each other. Exactly. And badass motherfucker stops... Trying to kill Cage and kills all the other yep. guys, almost as if like, fuck these guys anyway, because like I'm not technically like, a bad like, guy, but also I, I I can't deal with you other motherfuckers. I need to be one on one, right? And then okay, so he takes they take him out. Holy shit! This is leading to the single best line of the movie. Yes, you talking about <laughs> when it's one on one and they're back and forth as you would have. He, Cage has his his sword arm. Dude has his sword. They're fighting. Back and forth. It goes back. Cage punches him a few times. And? <laughs> and then kick to the crotch. <laughs> <laughs> the ball kick. Retaliated with a punch to the crotch. Yeah. And <laughs> and Cage, they, they, and they're looking at each other. Both just kind of look, uh, trying to catch their breath and both looking at each other in the eye of be like, <laughs> who's going to move next? And just like, <laughs> and just a slow like. Realization <laughs> of both of them just be like, hold up, I need a second. Yeah. <laughs> and Cage screams out. Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> like, screams out, oh, wait, you kicked, you punched me in the fucking other ball. <laughs> Fuck! And they both take a good 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> take a ball minute. reaction is the best way I can put it. Where they both go, wait, we got to hit the balls. We don't need to fight for 30 seconds. Time right? out, Time guys. out. Yeah. Time out. <laughs> Meanwhile, we got a we got a quick shot of the fucking governor rolling past his crib, and all the geishas have robbed his ass and are humiliating oh, him. Oh, and they're not like robbing him; they're making fun of him. They're like, "You fucking suck, <laughs> asshole!" Like you told us you were gonna have a statue, and and You're the not fun- shit. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is up to this point, the governor's like, "You fuck with me, I will fucking destroy you." And he comes in, he's like, "Come on, what's going on? Come on!" Like, and he, he it, like his true colors are showing up. He's this little bitch. That yeah. can't if he doesn't have henchmen, like he's got they, nothing. He'll shit. get robbed. They'll talk shit, and there's nothing he can yeah. do about it. Yep. And then we get the uh, like the House of Blue Leaves duel. That's all pretty, where it's got now a cage, and badass motherfucker have like composed themselves and they're well, standing. They, they do the eye stare, and you think for a second because Cage puts down like, all right, you know what? I'm not gonna fight you, man. 
and dude puts his sword achieved, and then they're just staring and, and at each other. And they're just staring. Like, they're, they're, they're a few feet apart, and you've got, like, little snow yeah. coming by. And I swear to God, in my brain, I just heard, like, that sound yeah, from the, Kill Bill. The water. Yeah. Doop, 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 doop. Yeah, I know. <laughs> doop, doop. <laughs> and... <laughs> There's almost the hint of like maybe we should just go after the governor because that guy sucks. That, it's what I thought was going to happen. Honestly, I will say yeah. the direction this movie takes a couple of things, and you go, okay, it's probably going to happen. And it goes, no, 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 no we're no, not going to no, do that. No. That's and, an honor thing, yeah. you know. And but they both put their swords away and then immediately go, nah, fuck it, let's go to the death and go pull the swords out and then start going at it. And uh, Cage does some. Quick dodge movement and then which fucking... man, if I could ever pull that off while actively missing a testicle freshly, <laughs> exactly like it was a straight like superhero like knee slide with one leg back. It was like yeah, that was something. Uh, it was it was pretty unbelievable. But you know what? He did win. He bested the uh, the badass motherfucker. Yeah, and you kind of feel bad, but yeah, I mean, you know, he's so lost your battle, dude. But then we get the um and and the next the next sequence where Bernice. You know who who has been trying to like take care of the sister, whatever, rolls up on the governor, and she's got a gun on him. Well, and then we realize, and then you get the sort of relationship the context. Yep. Okay. So in the dream sequences, her mother was shot. She's shot in the leg, and there's a guy. There's a there's a hand that comes down, the gloved With, hand that like pats her on the head. That to dude take, took no time to take. Literally, care of we realize the governor. Isn't like, you know, comes across her years later. She's on the street. She lost her mother. Literally, mom dead on the street goes, you're with me now. <laughs> like, we're talking about, what, five minutes after yes, mom's dead? Exactly. Like, they didn't even see if they could if save that. mom. Just like, like he, no, he's just like, your mom looks like you're, she's dead. You're going to be my sex slave, right? I mean, like, it, yeah. it, that kind of shit. So that's the thing. Yeah, it's not that he, it, it's not that he was like, you know, I want to take care of you. Or he's a benefactor. Like, he's I want a, you he's to take a, care of me. Yeah, I'm a creep. He's a disgusting motherfucker. Yeah. And obviously that is completely apparent in this exchange where, you know, he's basically pleading it for his life and the or not pleading, but he's just like, Yeah, yeah, you, you were never worthy, you slut, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And Talking like, shit. And she's like, dude, I, I was gonna already kill the fuck out of you. Now I'm you really gonna really do it. Just, you just want to add that shit because he's like, I was gonna just shoot you once, but you had to talk. So now I'm just now gonna I'm just keep gonna work my way shooting up. you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> to so the she unloads organs. on him, kills his ass, dead. Word then, travels fast after this point. Indeed, because the now fastest, insanely fast. The, the fast. fastest motherfucker this side of the flash. Long long haired flash kid who yes. he has three jobs, which is scream, front fast. Who, and, who had no reason being in Samurai Town in the first yeah. place, because before, he was still back with Ratman, which was a day's travel by car. <laughs> it was, but kid's fast. So, literally, kid, kid Governor sees that. <laughs> falls down. The next sequence is... It's the kid running. The, the kid, governor's dead. The governor's running, dead. Just announcing Governor's dead to everybody, and you're like, wait, it was... Yeah, again, was this a car drive way from... No, no, don't worry about it. Kid is fast the as shit. Town Kid's not even out of breath yet. It's like the next block up now. Yeah, they're all celebrating, and they they make the decision. All right, time can go on, and they you, let you, go. You know what? You know what we should do now. That the governor's dead. Blow up our home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they, but the whole thing is, is they go. All right, this ridiculous thing of us holding the one uh, out hand of uh, the clock, not moving. We can do it now, governor. Let it go. And again. Did I miss something <laughs> earlier in the movie that explained that the governor had put them in this situation? No. no. Anything of the sort? No, this is just some weird religious bullshit that they came up with. The well, governor's dead, so it's I a guess. good sign? I guess, but the governor's can... dead means they can change their lives, and their prophecy is different. I, <laughs> well, I have like, fucking it, no idea. I was going to say, like, it's, or, come on, it's interpretational shit, well, man. Earlier in it, like, it was still like kind of unclear to me of, like, if, it, if this was supposed to be set in, like, just this area that got contaminated <laughs> by the fucking nuclear waste was like the wasteland and then everything else outside of that area was still safe and yeah. like that was just being stuck there but yeah no it no. It, it it made no sense but they were just like fucking now we can just let time these go guys, on and these blow guys everything have up been for how who knows the length of time that they have been tug a rope like with the rope holding that fucking clock from continuing because no For one years. fucking put an anchor and down. And then they're, they're heard by Little Flash that or the like, fucking, the governor's dead and they're like, all right, well, it worked. We did it. We can let time start up again. We Fuck. can go. No, okay. 
No one thought about like taking apart the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody went behind in, it. In, in, went, in the years, no one was like, shit, you know what we should do? Like, I don't know, pull the power supply on the clock. Yeah. But uh, apparently the clock, all it takes is to get through one full minute, and then it just fucking explodes. And they're all like, to... fuck, we have 15 seconds at any point in time. Like, uh, dude, uh, unscrew the gear. But they're all <laughs> celebrated the clock right? blowing up to yes. represent... The town square a good, explodes. A good the clock, which was down. also where they were all sleeping and living. Yes. <laughs> and in case you were worried about Nick Cage's other ball, by the way, um, Bernice <laughs> does grab the key to un- comes back to it. Yes. To unlock the, the he suit, he does get the she, key. Yeah. Th- she did not. Her her sister, sister had right. snagged it this off of the me. governor and then dropped it in the middle of town square right. in the bloodbath. And he just happened to like wander up to it and be like. <laughs> Here's what it is. Oh, good. My ball, Conk. my other ball. Is, my other ball is safe. Is safe. Yeah. <laughs> he has a parting line as they are walking through town in the finale where he says, this samurai town is going to be beautiful one day. Yeah, as, as he's sitting there like with his whole arm and hand wrapped up, when he had the goddamn, when he had the goddamn sword on there, it was literally like attached through multiple fingers, just like screwed in. <laughs> yep. Through the bones with like not even Phillips head, like straight head <sighs> machinist screw straight in the thing. It's like if you're planning on saving the goddamn hand, you could have just like duct taped it. Nope. We're going straight through the bone with machinist <laughs> screws. Oh man. So Take yeah, uh everyone, that was uh Prisoners of the Ghostland. Holy shit. I, had, I, I, fucking, I still even after I ta- watching it and talking about it, there are parts of the movie I still don't fucking understand. Oh, no, no. <laughs> this is an experience that is endlessly uh rewatchable because you'll still never fucking understand half the shit in the movie. Yeah. I, I I can watch this five more times and I'll be like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Nothing makes sense. But oh man, and they, they, but, they, they, that's not even going deep into any of the like fugue state dream sequences that he had, where he was just oh, having man. conversations with like the entire interpretive dance collective as at once. And this, left this and one right. of those movies. I don't know if I would suggest you should watch it on drugs or stay away from this movie on drugs because who so, fucking knows? I watched it drunk once and and stoned once. Okay, there you go. <laughs> but I'm saying, I mean, would you probably, watch this movie on shrooms? Because I don't know. It, there's parts you're like, wow, that could look really fucking crazy. No. But there's other parts you're like, I think I'm losing my fucking mind right now. <laughs> I, so I don't know, man. I can tell you For, I will not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so. And here's the part where I will admit that uh, I will never be as good of a guest as Murph. Because I did not research the background of this story. It could have been a manga. Who knows, man? Who knows? I don't Who think it f- was, though, but it might have no been. Idea. Yeah. All right, but, so yeah. this is where we get to double featuring it. Yes, so yes, we oh. want to figure out if we were going to show this movie with another movie, what would it be? Do you want to go first? Oh, yeah, I got one that fits this. Get it. Let's take one genre and throw it right all its fucking head and go to a movie where one genre, but then it turns into a whole other one, the good, the bad, and the weird. I don't know if you've seen this. Good, the bad, and the weird. Yes, it is oh. a kung fu western, but don't fucking bring up some goddamn Shanghai Nights bullshit or Shanghai Noon. This is an actual good movie where oh, it's shit. a western, but it's fucking samurais. Everybody's still in western gear, but okay. it's it's like pretty much just kung fu fighting, but in the west. So I remember like there was a Takashi Miike movie called like Sukiyaki Western Django. But uh, I have not seen what you just talked about, and I want to. Yeah, yeah, it's worth checking out. It's it's fucking bonkers. All right, I will. Uh, I will put mine out there, and and you hit the nail on the head early in the episode where you were just like, "This is like some Terry Gilliam shit." Like, yeah, because the very first thing I thought of was Time Bandits. I mean, it can be oh. time. You can throw any Terry. I mean, because Time you can Bandits. Do Baron I mean, any it of those movies with this genre to world to like uh, they're in the fantasy world. They're in ancient Greece. It's like every they're in the oh, fucking. That's a good one. There's a goddamn yeah. like laser like starfighter situation in in a, in a in a fucking magic evil castle <laughs> scenario. <laughs> like it's a it, it's so goddamn bananas where it goes. There's Robin Hood situation like. Everywhere. Oh no, it's all over the place. So, so following that movie, and following this movie, just in my brain, we're just like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. 
So do you have anything you can think of if you were to double feature um, this? If I if I double featured it, I'd go for Death Race. There you like, go. Like, oh, like the yeah, original dude. one and just make that whole shitty stretch just be one part of the whole <laughs> freaking track just Fuck so it's yeah. like going through like Okay, now we end up having to like cut through the streets in Samurai Town. Is like all yep. the crazy craps going on there. Oh, you got the giant stretch that you can do with the ghost buses and explosions going left and right, dude. straight into a bandit town. <laughs> Motherfucker, that, 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 that's where I would go with that. I got Death one more I want to throw out there. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Return to Oz. I don't know if either oh, of y'all watch that. Shit. But yes, that movie still. God. You're just like, what the fuck is going on? Half this this kid's movie, mind you. That I still is, want yeah. to make a Wheeler suit. Yeah, <laughs> but that yep. believe I will one day. I almost <laughs> had the same feelings from watching this movie as when I was a child watching Return to Oz for the first time. Where I was like, I I feel like I should know what's going on, but the beats are <laughs> tick all tuck, the fuck tick all tuck. like yeah. So I would almost throw that out there as a weird kind my, of throw out there. My very first feature. inclination, which ended up being like a runner up in case somebody had already mentioned Time Bandits, was Army of Darkness. Oh, yeah. Just because it goes like all over the damn place, yeah. you know? But no, I, I these are great fucking double feature recommendations. I love these. They're also, I would awesome. love to see Ash versus Hero. Oh, that would my be God. awesome. Dude. And that's after. <laughs> yeah, so Chainsaw Just, Hand versus Sword Hand. Yeah. Go full blown, beat it like tape the left hands now, together. <laughs> let's just imagine a world where Hero leaves whatever weird ass mythical realm they were in. Yeah. Goes back to the States, is driving a big fucking like, you know, modern, uh, you know, sports, you know, American muscle car and ends up at a restaurant with a flat tire. Could he be in a future in later in life? The Willy's Wonderland character. No shit. Uh, there, there is a possibility. Because he didn't have many lines in this. He did say some shit, but he definitely yeah. didn't say shit in that, that movie. But anyway, um, we got to wrap this motherfucker up. Oh, yeah. We got into some heavy detail. <laughs> I think some of it was just ask, que- asking each other, do like, you know what you, this said? Did you understand what the yeah. fuck happened here? Yeah. There, was, there was, I think, some assistance asked from the other panelists. So There was there was a lot to go through yeah. here. I, don't, I have no idea how long we've gone. We, we're over an hour now. Oh, right? yeah, we're. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, you want to talk about the sponsors a little bit? Yeah, I mean, Let's do it. shit. You can go to GYPodcast.com. Little links up there. There's a nice little link for Amazon. Click on that link. Go shop like you usually do. But, shit, helps us out a little bit. Get a little fundage, equipment, sometimes alcohol, things of that sort. But just help out the podcast. Fuck yeah. You know, again, you're going to go on Amazon anyway. Might as well fucking just go through our website, click on the link. True. So, and then... uh. We got some merch, right? Yeah, we do. Oh shit! How do you yeah, get to the, how do you get the merch? I think we have a new design up, unless uh, Hobbit has been dropping the damn ball. <laughs> uh, I sent it to our talk weeks, shit about Hobbit weeks part ago. of the show. So, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, T Public <laughs> links up there. That yeah. same website I just told you about. So, I mean, and there is for all the GUI shows, including ours. Yep. Another great one from the Mouse of Madness. Great shows like that. Um, there's I don't know what fucking like thirty different designs from oh, all yeah, the yeah. podcasts. Not just shirts, you can get them on fucking anything. Banners. Damn right. Except for koozies. I don't like to remind uh, Lowdown about that. No koozies. <laughs> but besides that, a bunch of different shit. So reach out to us uh, directly as well. Like uh, uh, Beautiful Disasters Podcast on Facebook. You can uh, email us directly at Beautiful Disasters Podcast at gmail.com. Send us fucking recommendations. Yeah. We, we want to watch weird ass shit. That's what this whole fucking podcast is about. So, like, or just you know, comment on when we you know post the episodes. Did you watch that? What did you think of it? Like, did you think it was great? Did you think it was terrible or what? So, and of course, uh, go to gypodcast.com and check out all the other damn shows. And you know, like, support the network. We got a lot of cool shit going on. So, uh, I do want a couple quick thanks. I want to thank Patrick DeRoche for. Yeah, fucking amazing music that we've been using the last couple months. Uh, we've used his songs Detox and Move On for the intro and outro. Uh, you can find all of his stuff on YouTube. And Nick, of course, you are very well. Uh, I am I, I am well acquainted with Patrick. Yes. I, <laughs> I've, uh, I've been playing with him for the last 19 years. God damn. All right. <laughs> has it been that long? Because I've been seeing. It I, has. I, I've seen some synthetic nightmare shows. Like two singers ago, 
Damn. Or well, something. Or you, it, it, it's, it's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. I, st- I started playing with Patrick in 2003. We're still making music nice. together now, and at this point, I probably have a backlog of, I'm estimating, wait, I know the last time I actually like compiled it, it was over 900 songs that we hadn't even touched yet. Because he's Damn. just a machine, and he's just happy to see people using his stuff. He's got a band camp up now. Um, he does he, have a band camp. He, he, he does have a band camp up That's now. That's new. All right. I'll um, have to put a link to that. Yeah. Uh, so you know how you said before, like, you knew that he put up a couple albums. This is a different one that he just put up a whole other set of 12 to because, he, <laughs> because he'll write an album a week. And he, he's just happy to see people using his stuff. Um, he is prolific, and he's one of my favorite quality weirdos. Yes. <laughs> he, he, he's an awesome dude, and I love, I love working with him, and I love seeing it whenever anyone uses his music because it 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 in by extension it's mine too because everything that I do is is with him nice. um, so I gotta thank y'all for using that and and giving him a little bit of publicity he's he's one of my favorite people in the world he's absolutely my favorite musician I've been lucky enough that I've gotten to play with my favorite writer for the last 20 years fuck yeah so we love thank you, you for that <laughs> yeah and I, I hopefully we get to see you guys play live here sometime soon I we're we're in this 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 time where like the the last pandemic situation has started to subside a little bit, you know. Things are starting to happen again. There's shows yeah. that are opening up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's getting so, a little safe again. So, so I'm looking forward to hopefully sometime some synthetic here soon. Uh, we're we're gonna get to actually do a little bit of Ash and Ember uh, this week live. So Ooh, nice. That's right. gonna be fun. That's uh then that's me and uh that's me and Patrick's uh, newer project that uh Will from Synthetic is also in on that. So Fuck that's yes. gonna be fun. We get to play out a little bit for the first time this week. So kick ass. Yeah. All right. So I think that pretty much wraps it up. Yeah it does so all right. Uh Nick, thank you so much for being on the episode. Hey thank y'all for having me. And uh thank you for listening to all of you guys. I've been the Groots. Happy honor. Take care. Coming straight from the mouths of madness, I'm Lowdown. I'm F.U. Hunter. Do you love horror? We fucking do. So this is a podcast dedicated to all things in cinematic horror. We're talking movies, television, composers, special effects artists. We're going to fucking cover it. So if you love horror, embrace the madness. In a world with too many reboots and remakes, two men will stop at nothing to make it even worse. Join Mike the Hobbit and Tondi as they play by their own rules while pitching new takes on some of your favorite and least favorite films and TV shows. What podcast would dare to bring this upon the world? This is Smack My Pitch Up. GUIPodcast.com. <laughs>